So if we can go in the direction of a concierge level service, then there are ways to make it much easier for the client to pay a predictable price, mm-hmm. to have access to their CPA, to have access to the wealth manager. And it makes sense for the wealth manager and the CPA then too, because they can bake into the price, being able to talk to each other. It's like having a corpus callosum, your brain's no good without one, that they can trade information and they can work in the best interest of the client. The client gets great results. And when the client gets great results and you've set up the price so that it's profitable for the seller, then everybody wins. And you have happy clients who go tell all their friends and that's how you grow. So it's hard to make an argument against going in the, in the direction of subscription and incorporating higher levels of service for your buyers. Welcome to AFO Wealth Management Forward, a podcast about finance, accounting, technology, and entrepreneurship. We apply our decades worth of experience and insight into what makes businesses work so we can help others grow both personally and professionally. In this ever-evolving marketplace, we help accounting firms and financial advisors grow their practice through the adoption of holistic wealth management services. Learn from industry leaders and subject matter experts to unlock the secrets of their success a podcast that shows people and companies the transformative power of technology so they don't fear it, but instead harness it. Don't fight the robots, team up with them. And here are your hosts, Rory Henry, Director of Business Development and CEO Rob Santos of Arrowroot Family Office. Hi, everyone. Today we are joined by one of the accounting profession's most well-known thought leaders. She's a business coach for CPAs. Her program helps them get out of the accounting rut write their own rules, and create businesses that they want to own. She's also the host of a leading podcast, Business Strategy for CPAs. Rob, we are very lucky to have her on today. So without further ado, let me introduce our guest, Geraldine Carter. Geraldine, welcome to the show. Hi, Rob. Hi, Rory. Thank you for having me. Wonderful to have you on, Geraldine. Very excited. Let's, let's just hop right in. You know, usually at, uh, on our podcast, we love to start with learning a little bit more about you, your background, your kind of origin story, and what led you to start your own coaching company. Yeah. So I have one of those meandering paths. The <laughs> long and short of it is that I started a business with a friend and it fell into the finance role because I have an engineering degree. And we could not get the help and the guidance that we needed from our accountant or our CPA. And I would spend lots of time in the spreadsheets doing my own financial modeling to understand how much cash we were going to need to run our business. And when I ended up exiting that company, I went out on my own and was working with friends of mine who own businesses. People asked me for help because I could explain to them their P&L and their balance sheet. And eventually I was like, why, where's your accountant? And they're like, oh, they talk over me. They talk down. Like, I can't get it. I can't get a hold of them. They give me their autoresponder. And then a CPA reached out to me and said, you know, I think maybe you could help me with my business. And I had a record scratch moment. I thought, wait, what? Don't you guys touch businesses all day? Where's the challenge here? And once I got under the hood, I could see that there were a number of challenges inside the um, accounting profession as a business. And, you know, the, the challenges are the main challenges as I see them are pricing and they still bill by the hour pricing for P and L's and deliverables and balance sheets instead of delivering results and outcomes and not working with folks on the transition that they want to make in their business and helping improve profitability. So we focus on those things and help them get better results for their clients. And that's how in the end we can take a CPA who's overworked, underpaid, is totally done with three years of crazy tax season and actually convert, pivot their business into something that's much more simplified, streamlined, and more highly profitable. Yeah, makes sense. And I know you've talked about this four-lane highway analogy, Geraldine, which I loved. Can you kind of give the audience a breakdown of this four-lane highway? And then as far as wealth management concerned on our side, you know, where do where does holistic wealth management or holistic advice fit in there? Are we a carpool lane? Are we a master <laughs> car? <laughs> sure. Yeah. And the I, there's two ways to think about the four-lane highway analogy. And the, the story comes from a time that I was in China. And for listeners who haven't been, which I presume is probably most, the speed of infrastructure development is off the hook. And I was on this overpass looking down at a brand new four lane highway. You could jump on, you know, bring it up to 85 and get to Bangkok in a day. And on it, 
was a man in flip-flops towing an ox cart. And that was it. <laughs> and I looked over at the frontage road and in a cloud of dust was piled up hundreds of cars, you know, crawling along the frontage road. And I was like, what is going on here? Why are they stuck on the frontage road? When they could get on the highway, it's wide open and they could just be fast and free. And being in the accounting space reminds me of that experience. There's so much untapped potential here where accountants could get on the highway and bring their business up to high speed with nobody in the way, no interference and make tons of progress, but they're kind of piled up on top of each other in a generalist space, busy serving all kinds of people. And yet there are, you know, as I see it, four clear lanes that people can occupy in the broadly speaking, really broadly speaking advisory space. And at the one end, you can go into fractional CFO. In the middle, you can kind of be in the advisory. I don't love these terms because they're yeah. so confining, sure. um, but you could kind of be in the advisory space. You could get into just cash flow forecasting because really what business owners need is to under, to have a sense of what the future is going to look like. They have a sense of what the past looks like. It's not a surprise to them. They lived it. And then on the, in the next lane over, you can niche into productized services and move into subscription. It's a different, it's, you know, now we're talking different business models, but there are lots, I mean, there, there are just wide open lanes where you could get on and get up to speed and there's no competition. And why is then there's a log jam in, in, in this current model. It's really, you know, broken where you know, many people are working 60, 80 hours a week. You know, why are they unable to shift that mindset and go into this new blow up blue ocean where there's so much opportunity, Jerry? So I think it's a couple things. Number one, they've just, I mean, they've just been trounced by these three recent tax seasons. Yeah. So in fairness to them, they've just been handed a very difficult set of circumstances. And the industry, I think, doesn't give them the sort of leadership to get creative and innovative over in these spaces. I think the industry is still stuck in a Sally at mentality. Let's just do the same thing as we did last year, because that seems to be working. And as a result, there, there are too few examples of CPAs who have peeled off and carved a new evolutionary path into something that others can look to, to go, oh, it looks like that. Okay. I just need to see what other people are doing so I can kind of replicate it in my own style. There just aren't enough of those examples yet. So I, we're still in the very early adopter phase where it's mm -hmm. the people who are the most courageous, the most innovative, the ones who are, you know, the ones who would have gone and pioneered the wild, wild west and been like, mm -hmm. what's out there? But we don't have enough people who are doing it for others to have examples to look to. And, you know, the industry attracts, tends to attract a type of person who wants to follow guidance yeah. wants to follow rules and regulations and wants to put numbers in boxes. So what we need to do is create new boxes so that people can then say, okay, now I've got the box. I've got the ingredients. I can just go deploy it. Love it. And, you know, kind of shifting gears over to, um, you know, subscription model, you, you've discussed that the subscription model is the model of the future. We certainly see that in enterprise software, uh, space. And, you know, we talk to a lot of accounting firms about the power of starting to incorporate wealth management because it really leverages that subscription model. And it also really aligns with the clients. You succeed, we're going to succeed. You don't succeed, we're not going to succeed. So could you maybe speak to, to the power of the subscription model and how you incorporate that into your coaching? Sure. So we love the subscription model because it smooths out cash flow. It increases predictability. Yeah. It tends to increase customer lifetime value and number of other reasons. For the CPA, it makes so much sense. They already have clients who come back to them year after year, if only for a tax return, but oftentimes there's oftentimes there's accounting too. So they already have clients who have been working with them for a long time. So it just makes natural sense to move into the subscription model. Plus buyers, their clients tend to want access. So many 
so many clients can't get a hold of their CPAs because the CPA has taken on too many clients because they're underpriced and it sets about this sort of downward spiral. But when you can get off of hourly billing and you can price in a subscription fashion, then you can incorporate accessibility by raising your prices and then you reduce your client load and now your clients can actually get a hold of you. That's enormously valuable for your clients because their lives carry on while you're, while you're buried under a mountain of tax. So back to your piece about incorporating it and the, the wealth management side. The, one of the things that business owning clients will cite is a frustration that they can't implement some of the recommendations that their CPA might make because in terms of, you know, this retirement fund, have you started a 529 or an HSA and they set about doing it and they just get lost in the weeds and they have a bunch of questions. And as a consequence, both parties lose out the wealth management, the wealth manager loses out because the client's not setting up the funds because they're lost in the questions and the morass. And the CPA loses out because the client doesn't get as good a result because they haven't been able to successfully set up whatever tax saving vehicles are available. So if we can go in the direction of a concierge level service, then there are ways to make it much easier for the client to pay a predictable price, Mm -hmm. to have access to their CPA, to have access to the wealth manager. And it makes sense for the wealth manager and the CPA then too, because they can bake into the price, being able to talk to each other. It's like having a corpus callosum, your brain's no good without one, that they can trade information and they can work in the best interest of the client. The client gets great results. And when the client gets great results and you've set up the price so that it's profitable for the seller, then everybody wins. And You have happy clients who go tell all their friends and that's how you grow. So it's hard to make an argument against going in the, in the direction of subscription and incorporating higher levels of service for your buyers. Yep. Makes total sense. And, you know, a few things just to touch on the, the power of enterprise software in particular in the last five years has in the wealth management space, as it relates to accounting firms starting to adopt, have alleviated a lot of these problems, right? It used to have to be paperwork and faxing things, or, uh, you know, there was very difficult to screen share to see what they're doing. People got logged out. It was super frustrating, clunky, and, and whatnot. And, you know, one thing that we really love to see is through the power of enterprise software and some good practice management, you know, you can alleviate a lot of those, those things. You're alleviating that, that person on the cart that's you know, pulling on that freeway. It's wide and clear to just go. And some of the lowest hanging fruit are corporate uh, 401k plans, uh, you know, retirement, individual or corporate. Um, some of these kind of low hanging fruit um, that those problems have been in, uh, alleviated. But to back to the point about the subscription model, it is also just such a powerful business model for these accounting firms, in particular those that deal with business owners, because those, those are real value additive services from the tax side, but they're also very additive service from the advisory side. And those relationships can grow very, very large quickly or slowly over time. But because of that recurring subscription model, it starts to alleviate some of the stress on the compliance work that they're working on on the other side. So we've seen the power of that working with accounting firms. Yeah, and I'm, I'm interested, Geraldine, on, on some numbers and figures here on, on LTV, lifetime value uh, of, a, of a client and the customer acquisition cost. What are you seeing out there in the marketplace? Because I know it's, I've listened to one of your podcasts and it's being very much understated by a lot of accounting firms out there. Uh, can you kind of talk about these figures and maybe indicate or talk about how Uh, accounting firms or why they should invest in sales and marketing? Sure. So big question Yeah. in talking about, but let me see if we can chip away at it. So lifetime value of a customer, when you are, when your business is transactional in nature and, you know, you start your year at zero and you've got to go make whatever it is, a million dollars or $10 million in business, it's much more difficult than when you get on a subscription and you start the year with 70% of your business already on the books. I was just talking to one of my clients yesterday. She was putting out a proposal for one of her clients who had four businesses. And she was talking about thinking about onboarding them and the cost of cleanup and all the rest. 
and wanted to, in air quotes, cover her cost for the cleanup. And I said to her, well, how do you think, how long, and it was going to be a sizable chunk of change to onboard and sort of get past the gate of the cost of the cleanup. I said, well, how long do you think this person is going to be a client? And she said, oh, well, probably forever. She's been my client for 10 years. And I said, well, okay. So we're talking like another 10 more years. And she said, yeah, probably at least if not 15. So I said, okay, what's the total revenue potentially going to be? And we're talking, you know, 10 years, $50,000, maybe for controller level services, you're looking at half a million. So now the cost of the cleanup at 15 grand suddenly seems like, I don't want to say a drop in the bucket, like we should ignore it, but it's, it, it's much smaller by picture and she can take her eye off the fear of like, I got to cover my costs. What if there's scope creep kind of mentality? So think about the lifetime value of your customer actually <laughs> run the numbers. I, I'm surprised at how often CPAs don't run numbers, numbers on these things, run numbers on how much value your client would be if you had them for another 15 years and then consider you're, I mean, and most people stay like, they don't want to leave their accountant. They don't want to leave their CPA. It's su- it's a super yeah. sticky relationship and it is super high friction for people to leave. And I know this because I just transitioned accountant CPA and it is so much work. And it took me away from my business for more time than I care to admit. So people don't want to leave you once they're in, they're in they're going to stick around and they're going to have high lifetime value. So it's worth investing in acquire, investing in acquiring great clients. Mm -hmm. Now the ratios that people talk about typically are three to one, one. right? You want to have a three to one lifetime value, Mm -hmm. customer acquisition costs so that you make your costs back. But I think that in the accounting world, once we start to see more data come out of the accounting world for the subscription model, I think that ratio will be much, much higher because accounting and tax is so sticky, so sticky. as a profession and people don't want to leave. Makes, makes total sense. Um, you know, and kind of going over to our hourly billing versus kind of value-based people spend money on value. They don't, you know, they don't care about time. People care about self-interest and, and, you know, understanding what provides value and price accordingly. I think that kind of ties into what you were just saying. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely get off of hourly. It is <laughs> like nuclear waste. It is toxic and in enough time and given enough time and with enough exposure, it will kill you. <laughs> it is so bad for you and for your clients. There's no leverage in order to work, in order to get paid for an hour, you have to work an hour. But when you move off of hourly billing, there, you can now price and you can figure out how to systematize, get more efficient and increase your margins. Plus when you niche, and we haven't talked about this, we might, yeah. when you niche, you can focus on your industry becoming expert in it. And then you, it makes it so much easier to systematize. You deepen your expertise and then you can package up and sell your intellectual property. You can package and sell your smarts, you can put different kinds of boxes, you can put your knowledge in different kinds of boxes and the margins on that go to infinity, right? Asymptotic goes all the way out, right? And I just Mm -hmm. had somebody on my podcast, Brandon Hall from the real estate CPA Mm -hmm. who has built out digital products. His margins are in the nineties on the digital products, right? Which just when, if you're a CPA who's running 30% margins, just makes you take a deep breath and go, okay, wait, how can I do this a better way? So we want to get off hourly move in. I don't take my clients to value-based pricing because it's so hard where we go instead, which is much easier is tiered pricing at fixed prices, fixed fees, flat rates, whatever you want to call them. And that way your listeners can think about having bronze, silver, gold Mm -hmm. for a certain product package and they can set the price. They can deliver the service and stop having to worry about, stop having to worry about tracking every 15 minutes of what they did for who. So pricing unto itself is a whole other conversation. Uh, But certainly when you get into subscription, now you've, you're on sort of set it and forget it. And you have a really solid sense of where your revenue is going to be which enables you to rise up a bit from the day to day and look at your business and go, okay, how can we do this better? Cause you're not so worried about face planting into the bottom of your bank account when December rolls around or February and you haven't seen a, a payment from an invoice yet. 
it's amazing that you bring up the fact, you know, that we run into accounts all the time where we, we show them what their gross margin is and they, they kind of know it in their heart that it's where it's where it is. And their, you know, their business plan is to start counting minutes, right. For everybody in the firm. And it, 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 decreases efficiency. It doesn't necessarily work. But one big thing that we see uh, a ton is it is, you know, new gen talent uh, is allergic to that kind of model. Uh, could you kind of talk about maybe some of your clients and, and some successes or failures that they've had using some of the approaches you've talked about today for recruiting next gen talent for their firm and, and next gen clients? So, I haven't seen much success. So my clients haven't been recruiting and hiring because they've just been so busy. What they're doing is outsourcing. But I do work with some next gen CPAs who, and I'm calling next gen, like for me, anything younger than 35. (laughs) (laughs) So what I'm seeing is the same as you is these guys, they don't want the long hours They're just not interested. And they know that there's a better way. They've grown up with subscription. They get it. They're totally comfortable with it. They like this idea of subscription instead of ownership. And they're super tech savvy, right? All the, they don't have to worry about how do I convert my firm from a paper firm to a paperless firm? They're already there. So what I'm seeing is a real eagerness to just blow right past the old traditional model. Just skip it altogether. Like the shark didn't consult the fish when it was like, I'm jettisoning, but jettisoning bones, watch this. We're going cartilage only, <laughs> right? They're just like, here we go. We're going right to paperless. We're doing all digital, all virtual. I have clients all over the country and I know I understand how to price. I get it. And they're off and running. So I think if you're going to recruit next gen talent, you really need to get your brains around where they are. And not be the one who's in the way of this progress, because there's nothing that innovators like less than an old school person stifling innovation. The hiring climate in the accounting space is difficult right now. It's very short. It's very tight. So all the more reason, if you really want to hire talent, to figure out the piece about pricing, to figure out expertise, strategy, subscription, so that you have the finances to be able to afford top quality talent that you want on your team. Yeah. And, uh, you know, speaking about that, you know, that's the process, the, the model now kind of going into branding and marketing. And I think it's vitally important on attracting new talent. Can you kind of talk about the importance of building your brand uh, and, you know, what you can do out there uh, to uh, gain more exposure in this you know, marketplace that is the attention economy. <laughs> so what, what can yeah. firms out, do out there to, to attract talent and, you know, make themselves look um, good out there in the marketplace? Yeah. I'm glad you brought this up because I think most, uh, I think enough firms don't give it the attention that it's worth, yeah. that is worth the ROI. And, you know, fair enough. Like we're numbers people. We didn't go into branding and marketing and creative and design for a reason. We like numbers. We are mm-hmm. linear thinkers. So it's, it's a challenge for CPAs and it makes sense that it's a challenge. And nonetheless, that doesn't make it unimportant. And I had two podcast guests on recently, Brandon Hall from the Real Estate CPA, who I mentioned, and Tom Wheelwright, Tom Wheelwright from the WealthAbility Show. And both of them, they both have a very successful firms both of them without prompting said, one of the most important things that I did from the get-go was build a brand. And you can see it in the quality of the work that they put out, in the quality of the talent that they attract, in the growth that they've experienced Mm -hmm. and so on. So how does a CPA who's kind of been a one person shop for a long time begin making this transition? So the first A really simple place to start is get a website that is up to date. It's mobile, responsive. It was not built in the 70s. That just doesn't cut it. (laughs) It shocks me how I still see that. Or even 1995. (laughs) Or even 1995. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Like if it has banner ads at the top, it is time (laughs) to let that thing go. 
And to really work on copy that attracts your ideal buyers, a lot of accountants, they don't know what to say. And I get it, right? Mm -hmm. Writing copy for your own website is hard. I get it. <laughs> but to just plaster your website in a word salad of we do accounting for everybody from manufacturing to pharmacy to retail to running shoe stores and churches and nonprofits and everything in between, you've got an accounting problem. Bring it to us. We're experts at everything does you a disservice because number one, it's not true, but number two, it conveys to your client that, that you really can't help them. And they're just going to get another accountant who's an, a, a general purpose accountant like all the others. And it repels the top quality clients who are looking for somebody who really gets them. So you're, if we're just talking about websites here, which I think is the simplest place to start, yeah. you want your website to talk about your target market. You want it to talk about their pains so they know you get them and they that they know you understand their pains. You want it to talk about their dreams, what they want instead, which is super simple across the board. Generally, it's more <laughs> money and more time. And the fix, I know how to get you from which where problem? you are, the pain that you're in, to the dream that you have. I know how to get you there. I've done this with clients just like you. I have a proven process. I'll take you through these steps. It's predictable. I got you. That's what the visitors to your website want to know. They don't want like reference 7014B of the tax code. <laughs> like, they're just like, oh my God, I've all, you've already lost me. So really focus on, it, this all is helped by the way, back to niching, mm -hmm. focus on a niche, a target market and get to understand them. Because even though the principles of business are largely the same, like bring in more money than you spend, there's still nuances and subtleties industry to industry that are vastly different, right? And I don't even coach accountants or bookkeepers because it's different, right? I only work with CPAs because that's how there's enough daylight between those three lanes that I just focus on CPAs. There's plenty of them out there who need help. So get to know your niche, your target market, and talk to them about their problems and build your brand around helping those people solve their problems and get what they're really after in life. Makes sense. Makes total sense. And, you know, Geraldine, could you maybe just talking about your own practice and your niche, like a little bit, like what's your, what's your kind of ideal coaching client that you're working with? Um, that you're the most impactful with, with the program that you're, you're running. Yeah. So thanks for asking. I love talking about my business because <laughs> I really enjoy it. And I really enjoy helping CPAs who are struggling. They're overworked, they're underpaid, and they could be making so much more money than they're making if they just had the keys, right? They've just been given the wrong set of keys. Yeah. They're wondering why they're banging at the door and they can't get it open. But when we give them the right keys, it unlocks tons of value for them and for their clients. So most of my clients are solo owners. They're in the half a million to 1.2 million in annual revenue. They typically have a staff of three to six and they have a smattering of clients, you know, across the board, all the way through kingdom come that I was talking about, you know, everything from retail to manufacturing to construction and so on. And we can help them in a one-on-one -on -one setting pivot their pivot who they work with, what their firm looks like, how they price, how they package, how they're positioned in the marketplace. And what I'm now offering because my one-on-one -on -one has filled is a CPA reboot camp. It's a six week intensive where we're doing all the same work, just condensed so that they can move through all the material and then have unlimited support to implement it so that they can set themselves up by fall to have a very different CPA firm so that they're not going into the 2023, if you can even imagine that tax Oh season. my gosh. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, <laughs> makes your heart skip a beat. Yeah. So that they're not going into the 2023 tax season once again behind the eight ball. So if you have listeners who are curious about it, they can find out more at my website, which is shethinksbigcoaching.com where I have, it isn't live yet. I know this episode is going up really soon, but it will be. So, um, so check back. So that's the main way that I work with folks. Of course I have other ways, but, um, but certainly the one-on-one -on -one or the one to one to small group is so effective because they can share 
challenges. They can uh, trade secrets and help each other out. So I'm looking forward to growing that and helping scale it so we can help more CPAs so that you guys can have more CPAs who have more bandwidth, who understand, who can build concierge in. I don't know why I'm having trouble saying that today. I speak, <laughs> concierge. I speak French. I speak French after all. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so seriously, um, so that they can, you know, so that they can build in higher level services for their clients and combine wealth management and advisory in ways that everybody benefits. Yeah. Yep. And Rob and I always talk about, you know, just getting started. So, you know, I, I, I'd ask you, Geraldine, what would you tell our audience out there of ways of ju- like just getting started or, or shifting your mindset so you can get out of that accounting rut and transform your business so you can have that brighter future? Yeah. Well, mindset is everything because the results that you create in your life begin with the thoughts that you have in your mind. So one of the things that I do is help my clients think higher quality thoughts. And I realize that that seems out there for this audience, (laughs) but I can promise you that when you think I always run late, guess what you set yourself up for? You always run late. So if accountants, if listeners in your audience want to know what it sounds like to think higher quality thoughts, they can download my $10,000 per hour CPA scorecard where they can actually rate the quality of their thinking, score it and see what better thoughts actually look like. And they can find that at she thinks big coaching.com forward slash AFO. Geraldine, that's awesome. This is the actual steps that we're looking for. Um, I will put this in the show notes as well. Uh, I think that's a great spot for us to wrap up here. Uh, Rob, um, you have any questions for Geraldine? No, I, I, you know, Geraldine, thank you so much for coming coming on. And I'll say, uh, you know, we, we say it a lot on the podcast, but uh, denial is not a business strategy. Uh, and, um, you know, partnering and outsourcing with the robots and folks like yourself and uh, folks like ours uh, at AFO Wealth Management Forward uh, is much, much better. Um, than trying to put, uh, you know, uh, either a denial kind of tilt on it or um, thinking that you're in combative mode uh, for it. Um, So really, really appreciate it. Love all the stuff that you put out. And we're really looking forward to seeing all the stuff that you put out in the future as well and hope to have you back on sometime soon. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Roy, for having me. It's been great to be with you. And the exciting news is we're now on the Earmark app where you can earn CPE credit for listening to this episode and more. And you can go to earmarkcpe.com. It's easy. You just have to download the app. You take a short quiz and you get your CPE certificate for continuing education that's never been easier. So once again, you can go to earmarkcpe.com and Rob, once you go ahead and drop a line about our program. Yeah. And if you're interested in adopting holistic wealth management services into your practice, into your firm, you can visit our site, which is wealthmanagementforward.com. Send us an email. You can schedule a call on the website. <laughs> we are happy to spend as much time as we have, which is a lot these days. Okay. We have a whole full team here to try to help people um, to at least send you in the right direction. Even if you're not working with us, we can try to help you do a full analysis of kind of what you're what you're doing and what you can small, very easily uh, steps to be able to make your practice bigger. Yes, better. Yes, Rob. And we have some exciting guests coming up uh, next week. We have Peter Margaritas. <laughs> how fun! What? How fun was that? That episode, Rob. Super fun. And the fact that we got Peter Margaritas and we're talking mm-hmm. about it on a Friday, you know, is <laughs> great. Yeah, I love he is it. a C- he is a CPA. He's an improv virtuoso. Uh, he talks about how you can utilize business improv to help you communicate financial information with confidence and clarity. Uh, so we'll have him on next week. Um, he talks about Martin Luther King, Steve Jobs, uh, and ways to better your public speaking skills. It was probably one of our most fun podcasts that we've ever done. <laughs> so you should definitely catch that. Um, we're going to have an accounting stand-up night that's going to come out of that and really excited about that um and then you know last but not least we have an exciting episode with dr sean stein smith cpa and forbes crypto contributor to talk about the latest in blockchain crypto wealth management and everything else out there 
He was one of our first guests that we had, Rory. Um, yeah. It probably one of the more influencing voices uh, in the CPA crypto world. And, you know, we've heard this a ton from uh, CPAs that we were working with that have crypto clients. They can't hire CPAs fast enough uh, to be able to help with their businesses. That is just a reflection of how much that business is booming. And so if you're a CPA and you're thinking about, wow, well, that's kind of a crazy notion, just know that accountants that are even just focusing on that just slightly have so much work coming at them that they are are scrambling uh, to be able to pot, uh, hire some new CPAs. So if you're looking for a job in the crypto space, you're a CPA, let us know. Uh, we, we know people, people out there. Yeah. We know people who are very eager to meet you, uh, especially before the filing deadline. So <laughs> let us know. All right, Rob. Hey. Thanks, Rory. And Thank uh, let's go March Madness. You know, whoever your team is, we wish you the best of luck. Unfortunately, UCLA will probably beat them at some point down the road. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> so be well out there, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. And Thank again, you. subscribe, rate. Great. That's, that's all we ask. Thank you. All opinions expressed by Rob Santos and Rory Henry on this website podcast interview are solely their opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Arrowroot Family Office LLC or their parent company or affiliates and may have been previously disseminated on television, radio, internet, or another medium. You should not treat any opinion expressed by anyone as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a particular strategy, but only as an expression of their opinions. Past performance is not indicative of future results.